Today, we are discussing how do you manage and overcome things like stress, overwork, and burnout. And to help me discuss this, I have a very special guest. He is a business and a life coach. And welcome to the show, Mr. Uh, Lawson. How are you doing? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. And uh, I'm very happy to join you in uh, this uh, discussion of managing stress anxiety and burnout in the workplace before even we begin i would want us yes to define these uh, things what is stress what is anxiety what is burnout but the uh, first question is do we really have an issue in the workplace where people are suffering from stress anxiety and burnout uh worldwide yes stress anxiety and burnout is a very big issue uh, from the point of view that you understand that we are just coming out of COVID, we've got uh, the, the the downturn in the economy, and uh, all this bringing a lot of stress and anxiety to people, uh, leaders, and uh, their teams in the workplace. Okay, so the fact that we have these issues, um, how would we define them? What would we say? What is stress, or is the normal day-to-day -day conversation someone saying oh i'm really stressed up what is this anxiety and how do we be uh, how are you able to define these terms just unpacking what is stress anxiety and burnout yes. actually stress is uh, very good for us it is a natural phenomenon for you to be able to uh, to close other areas and be able to focus and uh, pay attention to only one thing so stress is a good thing uh, mm -hmm. stress is a bad thing uh, when it is over an extended time if you are alert for a very long time then uh, there are other uh, functions within your body within your emotions within your mental uh, faculties that mm -hmm. would be shut off and if they are shut off for a very long time it causes uh, danger. The same uh, to do with anxiety. Anxiety mm -hmm. is also very good in uh, giving you the motivation to focus on something and finish it off. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is good on that aspect. But again, when it is impacting on uh, your productivity, when it is taking over your work, then, then it becomes a little bit of a problem. Uh, mm -hmm. Burnout, on the other hand, is chronic stress that has been poorly managed. And actually, uh, the World Health Organization uh, mm -hmm. has defined stress as a disorder. So it is something that all the organizations are dealing with. And uh, there is actually a pandemic across the world uh in the workplaces on these three aspects uh stress anxiety and burnout okay okay so what would be the best way for someone to be able to manage these things in the workplace the stress the anxiety and burnout how what would the procedure be to manage it then i think i think one um when we talk about stress uh anxiety and uh, burnout in the workplace, it's, it's talking about how toxic is the, uh, the workplace. Uh, for example, if we are looking at uh, the promotions, are they on merit? Do we have policies and procedures to curb uh, gossip within uh, the organizations? Uh, is the pay right? Because again, if you are not paid uh, uh, properly, then you get stressed. Uh, in other parts of your of your life, so yeah. we are dealing with uh, toxic uh, toxic within the, the the workplace and how to manage it. Now, we, we what we are going to do first uh, to manage the uh, the stress and anxiety within organization is mm -hmm. to first of all get to the organization, have policies and procedures in place. And then would be able to go in and say individually, this is how we manage uh, the, the stress, anxiety, and burnout at individual level. And uh, we can 
discuss that one in more elaborate uh, a few minutes after. Okay, so let, let's go maybe at an individual level. Um, yeah. And I'll also come to some of the questions I've seen uh, already being posted here. Somebody is asking, when, when, uh, when any person becomes jobless, how do they minimize the stress? Yeah, we, we will come to that. But the question here is, how? What are some of the symptoms or signs someone can be able to identify in themselves to know that, hey, actually, I think I'm suffering from stress, or I think I'm having anxiety or burnout? What are some of the indicators that someone can look out for so when you are when you are having uh, stress within within your body it is about mm -hmm. uh, emotions it is mm -hmm. about your physical self it is about your mental abilities so in uh, in stress you will be moody you will be irritable very irritable uh, you will feel loneliness you feel dizzy uh, you'll be having anxious uh, thoughts. you also mm -hmm. be feeling unhappy. Now, when you're feeling uh, the anxiety, you feel less stress, uh, you've got tension, you will be sweating. Sometimes uh, if it is uh, chronic anxiety, you may be having uh, panic attacks. Mm -hmm. For burnout, um, you will be lethargic. Uh, things that you found pleasurable doing, uh, mm -hmm. you you become lethargic, you are critical even for your organization. If you are working in an organization, you, you, you are so critical of the organization, you are lethargic, you are disengaged and all these kind of things. Ah, okay, okay. So those would be some of the symptoms to show us uh, maybe we are having such issues. How would you respond to this gentleman, uh, Khan, who said, yeah, sometimes when someone loses a job, they start getting stressed up and yeah. How would they minimize the stress? I think when, when we are managing stress at individual level, mm -hmm. uh, we will be looking like, uh, for example, we've got a support uh, mm -hmm. Somebody you can talk to about uh, what you are feeling, uh, what you are going through, and also getting ideas on how to, for example, get a job. Uh, mm -hmm. You will uh, you will also be looking at uh, being mindful, uh, be able to have exercises like walking, uh, just being able to self love, uh, to love yourself more. Uh, in whatever you are going through. Okay. And uh, there's something interesting here. You have talked about having someone to talk to who would be uh, very important. I think this just comes in as a comment from uh, one of um, our followers. Uh, yeah. Lillian, she says, I went away, I underwent chronic stress after the burial of my daughter, 17 years of age, and I had no one to talk to, uh, to me. Sad indeed. Uh, really uh, just empathize with her. And I think, as you said, yeah, having someone to talk to would be very important, right? Yes, yes, certainly. Um, so how do we manage uh, anxiety, burnout, and especially uh, with the use of maybe a therapist or a coach? How do they come into play to help us manage that? I think I think let's let's first of all unpack some of the things that uh, even before you get to go to a therapist, there are mm -hmm. things that you can do uh, for yourself and mm -hmm. be able to manage uh, the stress, anxiety, and burnout without necessarily either going to see a doctor and getting that medication for stress or alternatively mm -hmm. going to the to the uh, therapist. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, when you are having situations of stress, anxiety, or burnout, mm -hmm. uh, you, you will become sleep deprived. So you mm -hmm. don't sleep properly. So again, there you must undertake um, uh, sleep hygiene. The mm -hmm. way you, uh, you try to sleep at uh, the best times uh, having, say, seven hours of sleep, 
you sleep at 10, you wake, uh, you wake up at 6, and all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. Then we say that we are what we eat. What you eat will help you in managing uh, stress, anxiety, and burnout. So mm -hmm. uh, having a balanced diet is very important. Avoiding uh, saturated uh, uh, oils, sugary mm -hmm. foods, and uh, all these fast foods. Being able to know that you are taking enough of the proteins, you are not taking a lot of yamachoma and all these mm -hmm. kinds of things. So mm -hmm. you, we normally say that you are what you eat. Mm -hmm. uh, so also having uh, work-life balance. You are not always overloaded with work because that means that you won't sleep properly you won't mm -hmm. eat properly uh, because at some point in time you can't be able to cook uh, or have food you need to also be mindful mindful means that you are always positive you are positive in your thinking um, mm -hmm. you practice forgiveness when somebody uh, steps on your toe in uh, in the bus or in the matatu you don't lash at, at them you forgive them you mm -hmm. have uh, you have uh, uh, what we call a gratitude journal a gratitude channel journal helps you in knowing that at the end of the day i will write five positive things that are good during the day so your mind is looking for those good uh, opportunities uh, yeah. so that you can have something to, to write in your journal. In your journal, you are also writing anything that happened to you during the day and your response would need to be improved. That yeah. means that you will also be avoiding situations where you will be saying to yourself in the evening or in the morning that I needed to improve this. So you'll be avoiding situations where you are not very good uh, in in terms of your responses to other things that are coming up to you. Thank you, thank you. I really like, that is quite good. Um, the idea of sleep, yeah. Mm -hmm. and sometimes people talk about uh, quality of sleep versus the quantity. Is it about, about the amount of hours or is it how the quality of sleep going to deep sleep? Maybe you can comment something on that. I like also the fact of uh, eating well. You are what you eat. I remember mm -hmm. there's a time back, I had a conversation with one of my colleagues and number one, it was a Monday and they were the so-called Monday blues. And they're like, I'm really feeling demotivated. I just wish this day can come to an end so that I can go and sleep. I don't feel like doing anything. And of mm -hmm. course, um, just checking out and he asked me, why are you so energetic? How comes you're so energetic? You're all over the place. And mm -hmm. I was like, it depends. I can, I don't know where you are over the weekend, but probably you overindulged and also did a lot of fast food. And you know, mm -hmm. of course, especially during the weekend, you feel like you need to relax, yes. But that kind of what you put in your mouth actually affects who you are even the next day. And mm -hmm. um, I really uh, like that. And then um, the last thing when you talk about gratitude and actually journaling, I started this practice, I think a while back, uh, almost two or three years ago, and it has been life changing, whereby mm -hmm. every day I try to, uh, you can do this in the morning or in the evening, but I do it in the morning. I mm -hmm. write three things that I'm grateful for that happened in the last 24 hours. As in, mm -hmm. and that forces me to really think through my day and be very like, do you want to tell me nothing good has happened? And there might be some very simple things like, um, I was able to finish my task that I had uh, set to do yesterday. That would be a tick. Mm -hmm. Oh, we had a nice movie with my family or with my children. We enjoyed this. Those mm -hmm. small, small things really mm -hmm. make a very big uh, difference. Now, there's a question here, and uh, I want to welcome each one of us. If you have a question, feel free to drop that uh, in the chat as we continue having a conversation with uh, Bona uh, Lawson. Now, somebody is asking, how do uh, how to manage career stagnation that ultimately causes stress. So the fact that maybe they have been in this position for a very long time, they're not seeing any way of uh, moving forward. How, how would you uh, maybe handle that? I think 
when when we are looking at uh, stress in the workplace, mm -hmm. uh, the issue of job security, job advancement, and uh, all that is very important in the way you manage uh, the stress. Um, there is uh, obviously when you are when you are feeling that uh, you've stagnated, there are issues that uh, you can do. You first of all need to speak to your to your people, uh, the, your supervisors, your managers, and leaders, uh, to be able to say that uh, look, I've been uh, in this job for uh, the last three years, and I'm not seeing any advancement. Um, you get to understand how uh, the plans, what plans they are for your advancement. And then you start uh, looking at that career path, which you, uh, you put down together with your leaders. Also, uh, just being able to understand things like delegation, because sometimes you stay in your job because there is nobody else who uh, the organization can say this person is going to do your, this job and therefore you you also move to the other level. There are people who uh, in the organization, uh, they don't train uh, those people uh, who work under them or uh, horizontally. Uh, those people obviously for uh, very good reasons stay in their own place. Uh, people who are also not good in their uh, interactions with other uh, with other uh, colleagues, uh, obviously they can't go up because uh, they don't know how to interact or socialize with other people. So there, there are these kind of things that one needs to change uh, in the way they are uh, they are working on day to day basis uh, mm -hmm. for them to unlock them their their potential. Good. Thank you. Thank you about uh, that. And I can see more questions uh, coming in. There's uh, John saying, thank you very much for this presentation. We really appreciate it. There's another question I've seen from uh, Eric Motuku. Actually, I'll come to that question. Right now, I want to ask one of the other thing I've seen people get into this stress, anxiety, and even burnout because, number one, it might be about the boss, having a very toxic boss or mm -hmm. having um toxic work environment so mm -hmm. what advice would you give to someone who either have a toxic boss or a toxic work environment how do they manage that i think uh, one of the things that uh, would be a bit unfortunate uh, uh, in dealing with is having a toxic uh, boss uh, because um you 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 can't avoid uh, the boss. Uh, you can't uh, uh, say, for example, block him uh, from calls and uh, WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. So uh, that introduces a level of stress. But one of the things that you need to do is to not take it personally. Because if you take it personally, then mm -hmm. every time you meet with him, even your face, your uh, your face will show that uh, this is a person that I, I don't like. Um, mm -hmm. You not be able to smile to somebody who you have branded as somebody who is stepping on your toes. So don't take it personally. Uh, then you need to understand that uh, it is not about uh, what you are. It may be that the person is having also anxiety or stress. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we call compassion, you must uh, try to practice compassion uh, to your boss. Uh, then uh, you, you, you also need to practice forgiveness. Forgiveness, mm -hmm. um, forgiveness uh, is like you can write a letter, which obviously you are not going to post, and say, mm -hmm. boss, I'm very disappointed with uh, the way I, you deal with me. And uh, this is how I would like you to change and all these kind of things. What we call manifestation, manifesting uh, a boss that is uh, dealing with you properly because the universe has got a way of uh, giving you what you are asking for. Uh, yeah. so 
those are the some of the things that uh, that uh, we, you can do to ensure that uh, you don't cross swords with the with your bosses every, every other time yeah thank you thank you uh, I, I really appreciate uh, that compassion plays a very big role yeah if you are able to be compassionate to yourself first and then you can be able to extend it to your boss Eric Botuko asks how do you manage stress of the career you are pursuing since it stresses me yet I haven't completed my studies I'm stressed on how after studies it will be okay I'm not sure uh, what exactly it is maybe he's still in school pursuing his uh, career or maybe mm -hmm. he's still at work trying to balance work and finishing studies but mm -hmm. what do you get and maybe some uh, advice for Eric Mutuku here I think Eric uh, may be for example uh, when we look at accounting you mm -hmm. are already an accountant uh, somewhere in uh, in uh, in a workplace mm -hmm. but you are also going to a place like Strathmore to qualify as uh, as an accountant mm -hmm. and therefore you've got the stress of the work itself and mm -hmm. in the evening or on Saturdays you will be required to uh, be in class or uh, even if it is distant learning you are supposed to to combine those so uh, now Eric may be having uh, issues of this this work seems to be a lot mm -hmm. and uh, same time I, uh, even reading is also uh, a bit of a challenge and therefore may be wondering even if I did uh, qualify uh, mm -hmm. with a job that is still very stressing where do I go uh, in terms of how do I manage stress now and in the future yeah, just to, bring, just to bring in uh, context, I think he has commented and said he's still in school. Okay, uh, yeah. so if he, if he's if he's in school, then uh, he's a he's a good candidate for you uh, in mm -hmm. terms of career choice, a choice of career that um, that uh, makes his heart sing. Um, mm -hmm. There are people there are people who uh, who will become fighter pilots. But mm -hmm. uh, there's another one who will see fight, fight up uh, that speed is not what I would like. Uh, so yeah. one uh, chooses the career that makes their heart sing. Well, correct, correct. Now, as, as uh, we wrap it up, um, I want to say thank you very much. So many people putting in uh, their comments and uh, saying they love this. I, I have one last thing, yeah? Uh, maybe it's more, I, I, you have shared with me your story, how you have moved from one place to another. And one of the other things I normally try to teach or also help people is to get good paying jobs, maybe with NGOs, international organizations. But mm -hmm. the flip side of that is the more maybe your pay, of course, more is expected from you. Mm -hmm. And uh, that also brings in a bit of more is demanded, a bit of stress, a bit of um, of course, you can call it hard work and all that. Maybe you can share a bit about maybe your story, how you ended up working in this different organization, and then you realize, oh, maybe I'm also falling into the same trap of this stress and that in burnout. Mm. So I can start uh, I, uh, with the fact that um, in my previous life, I was an accountant and I was a banker. I worked. Uh, with uh, KPMG East Africa, then I moved to a bank in uh, in Nairobi, and mm -hmm. then I moved to another bank uh, in um, in Kigali, Rwanda. And in all those, uh, first of all, qualification as an accountant uh, to me was very stressful because I did uh, the exam in uh, four sittings, and uh, because I didn't have the right experience. Of work, of work, even doing those uh, higher exams like section five and six was still a bit of a problem because you require a bit of experience. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was very hard work where I sleep uh, uh, almost for three hours and wake up and go back, read and then go to work and all that. 
having to do both sections within um, within one sitting six months was uh, very stressful and uh, very with a lot of anxiety. Now, okay. in terms of uh, in terms of going uh, to join the KPMG again, uh, at that point in time, I had not passed through the university, so I was I was having this uh, what you call imposter syndrome, where you want to feel that uh, you don't know, you feel that uh, you don't know as much as you actually know, and mm -hmm. uh, that that becomes also a challenge in the way you relate to people. Uh, when I went again to the bank, it was still the same thing. I want to get more qualification because I, I think I don't know enough. Uh, and this follows you. You get the degree, you get the qualification. You are still thinking that you, you want to get more. And it produces a lot of stress, anxiety, because even at those leadership level, you are still thinking, in the same way as that young man who did not go to the university and therefore uh, is linking with other people who have got phd and you you get a masters the more you the more you the higher you go the more you think you should be knowing uh, mm -hmm. you are thinking just because you become a chief executive you should mm -hmm. be a doctor you should be having a phd whereas having your MBA or even having your first degree together with the qualification would be enough. Yeah, thank you. Um, so what I want to do is, uh, thank you. I can see so many people uh, putting in a lot of comments. They like the conversation. Um, there's, uh, okay, uh, there's someone here, William, saying thank you very much for the knowledge. Benson also very uh, liking the conversation. I have seen Doreen, yeah, you say you are looking for a job. I'll give you a link where you can send me your CV together with Esther, who's also wants to get a job with NGO. I'll share a link shortly. So how do people get in touch with you? I know whatever you've shared has been of value. By the way, if you have found value in this session, drop it in the chat as uh, just appreciate it, uh, appreciate Mr. Lawson. I will be pulling uh, the comments. So if you have found value in the chat, uh, put it in the chat. How do they get in touch with you? If someone feels like this is the best, I think you can be able to help me in the kind of situation that I'm in. I think uh, I, I have, uh, I will share the LinkedIn uh, and also the email and, uh, yeah. and also my phone number where we can communicate on uh, WhatsApp. Yes, actually that is uh, his email address. You can also find him on LinkedIn. So I have, um, I want to put across here. This is his LinkedIn profile, yeah, and it's also in the chat. Feel free to get in touch uh, with him. Follow him on LinkedIn, or uh, let me just try to get the email alone. I'll actually put all of this in the chat so that uh, they can be able to get in touch with you. Otherwise, it has been a great session. I really enjoyed. I also have learned. Uh, a lot as we continue so there we go i put in the chat get in touch with him on link uh email it is lawson at lawson.naibo at hotmail.com then there's the linkedin i think they have been combined they shouldn't be uh combined so let me put a space yeah there we go so the link and the email uh the linkedin are two separate things Thank you. Thank you. I can see people say they got value. I really appreciate. And yes, that is what we do here. We try to bring you uh, people who will give you some insights, advice, and help you as you navigate in your career. So today we have uh, Mr. Lawson. I really appreciate that. And any last words you might have to say before uh, we leave? I think I think it's just to emphasize that if you want to manage stress, anxiety, and uh, and burnout, mm -hmm. one of the things that uh, you should do is sleep for uh, between seven and eight hours, mm -hmm. and also be mindful of what you eat. 
you need to exercise, you need to be mindful. Every time you have this issue of stress, uh, breathe in very deeply mm -hmm. and breathe out. Make sure that the, your, the, the, the stomach expands and uh, when you're breathing and when you're breathing out, it contracts to the spine. You will be okay without necessarily having the therapy. Actually, you have said, mentioned something I had forgotten. Uh, there's the issue of sleep, yes, which is important for you to sleep. Um, yeah. what, what is your what is your take? There's this argument of quality over quantity. Is it how much time you sleep or how deep you sleep? It is it is both because okay. um, you are supposed to have a very deep sleep and very mm -hmm. light sleep. Uh, and we have what we call a cycle uh, mm -hmm. whereby when you sleep at 10, uh, between 10 and, uh, and midnight, mm -hmm. you, you, you have that period of uh, deep sleep. And mm -hmm. then you've got an internal clock that is mm -hmm. regulating the quality of sleep. So the deep sleep uh between 10 and uh and uh, uh one 12 one there is regulated mm -hmm. and the internal clock is like a thermostat that is guiding on what sort of sleep you're getting so mm -hmm. between now um uh, one o'clock and uh, six o'clock you mm -hmm. are almost uh, getting into the lighter sleep where you you get into the dreams and all these kind of things. Now, the function of the deep sleep is to empty the tox toxins within the brain. It's, the brain is like, uh, uh, I would say, an engine. An engine, mm -hmm. has, a fire engine has got an exhaust. So all the, the, the smoke is coming out. So we, between 10 and, the, and uh, uh, 1 o'clock, is where the blood is taking away all the toxins from the brain as a result of working the whole day. During mm. the during the the, the period uh, one o'clock to uh, six o'clock, mm. that period where your body is relaxing, and therefore you will have uh, in the morning you wake up refreshed and all these kind of things. So if you are just about uh, if you are just sleeping up to three o'clock and not sleeping the other part, the, you are losing on the quality of relaxation. So you wake up very tired. You mm -hmm. wake up feeling that it's as if I haven't slept. If you also miss the sleep between 10 and uh, one o'clock, then you start getting inflammation. That is at the end of the day, uh, when you have this meant, uh, brain inflammations because of th those toxic toxin did not go out, then you will have issues to do with dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, even some uh, some carcinogens. You find that uh, you've got tumors in, of the brain, you have headaches and all these kind of things. So it is uh, sleep. Uh, the number of hours you sleep is very important. The quantity and also mm -hmm. the quality of the sleep and you've got the thermostat that is guiding you on uh, the sleep pattern thank you thank you very much i i, I like that and uh, maybe one more hack i can share i had learned uh, because some people have the problem of actually falling asleep so that is why they end up sleeping late and then they end up again waking up early and they miss all that that you've shared and mm. that is exercise. When mm. you beat your body for it to be really tired, mm. by no, by by default, it will fall asleep because one way of it refreshing um, mm. is to sleep. So yeah, exercising mm. also plays a big part in helping you manage your sleep. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you very much. I really appreciate. It. I have seen several people saying uh, they liked the session. It was a great session. Thank you very much, Morgan. There's uh, also few people, Lillian coming in, one of my super fans. Thank you. I can see also Eric saying he got a lot of value. God bless you for taking time to share with us. And uh, some people, uh, Edward, I saw you ask, uh, where can I get uh, a job, assist you getting job opportunities? 
let me share this very quickly now i have put a link in the chat so if you go to that link it is uh, free resources that we are offering to you that is careerpointsolutions.com forward slash resources here you'll get an opportunity for you to submit like here your cv for a free review we will let you know what works for you and what is not working you can also download this ultimate cover letter guide we have an event this week talking about how do you get jobs with ngos and international organization so somebody asked about it so all these free resources are here for you make sure you take advantage of that i put that link in the chat or just go to our website and go to the tab resources it has been a great time i really appreciate ladies and gentlemen until next time we are out Thank you.